Hey everybody, so, you know, we, <laughs> we got another book here, another book that I finished, and let me see, how long did it take me to write this, not write, finish this book? I feel like, I feel like it just took me around six hours, maybe five, maybe even four, because, you know, you do other stuff for around the house. You know, I don't just read for four hours straight. There's some some time in between if I have to use the bathroom, but you know, usually I'm reading. So I'm sorry that my voice well not necessarily sorry, but my voice is gonna be a little low because you know, it's three in the morning and and while I'm awake, you know, I'm pretty, my day is pretty much started already. And everyone else is asleep, so. And usually I record during the day when everyone's awake, but. You know, do what you gotta do. So, Glut. What, what was this book about? And when I first got this book, I thought it was gonna be like. How to retain information better, honestly, because <laughs> I guess that's what I was looking for at the time. Because I don't just download books and read them right away. Like I download them, and then I oh yes, I read ebooks. I don't think I've stated that yet. I read real books too, and I also listen to audio books. But I find that reading. Ebooks is more for, it's more of immersion for me because I can just understand it better if I read an ebook while, usually when I read real books, I'm reading for a specific topic. So, like, it's a good example. I'm going to the library today. Oh, no. I could talk about the books I just finished reading. There's one on sleep, and there was a specific subtopic. That I noticed in the table of contents that I wanted to read, so I got that book. And since I had already, or since I had already previously read multiple books on sleep, like I don't have to keep rereading the the same <laughs> the same studies, because you know they like the same study about the people who lived in the cave for, if I remember correctly, it was either two months or thirty two days, and they tried to reset their circadian rhythm. So, you know, <laughs> I don't have to read that a fourth or fifth time through again. I just go to the parts that I want to see and the parts about dreams. And then, like, investing books. I picked up two of those. And with that, I mean, I kind of read, I can't say I read the whole thing, but I kind of read those a little more attentively. Because since I... Uh, I'm pretty much a beginner in in investing, but you know, to like I said with these ebooks, to immerse myself more. But I just like these ones because it's more it's just easier to read for me, especially since when I read, I walk, and I don't have the ability to to read comprehensively, read a book comprehensively while the papers keep moving and things like that but with ebooks you know i could i could walk in and read the whole time so now we can get into what the book is about number one so this book yeah this book is pretty much how information was transferred throughout the ages you could you could say it was how information was transferred throughout the ages and well, there was there's really two main things that they talk about in this. They talk about how it was transferred through like pastime before reading and writing, and then when people learned how to write and read, and they evolutionized, evolved. That's more better. That's a better word. But when they evolved, so before they started, before they evolved, people, they, 
pass the information through oral oral language. Orality. I'm pretty sure that's the correct correct tense. So through orality and those oralities, they were called memes. Now I don't know how modern day memes came to be and I don't know the definition of modern day memes. I don't know if it's supposed to be a a a kind of joke against the past people because meme is just just an information I don't basically just information being spread. That's that's what it used to be at least now. The due to the etymological definition of it, but like I'm not sure about the new definition. And other than that, they talked about the part of humans that that masters information. Or not the part of humans, but the human technique that masters information, which is taxonomy. And if you don't know what this is, because I didn't know what it was until I read this book. Taxonomy is basically the categorization of an object or a specific thing into group, subgroup, you know, into a main group even, and into smaller meta groups. So, for instance, a plant. This was the example I gave. A plant, and the plants have different classifications, which are, honestly, I don't know the Latin names. So, but you know, are animals. Like, they, they have the animal kingdom, and then the, the species, and then you could just keep going down the list until you go to exactly what it is. And I'm pretty sure the example they gave was black, long-haired, I'm not sure wh- what the animal was, but maybe rabbit. Black, long-haired rabbit, we could say. Wait, there's not such a thing as a black, long-haired rabbit. Hey, okay, we know it was a rabbit for sure, but <laughs> it was something like that. But but taxonomies, that is a thing that that humans have learned throughout the ages, and we still use and it was used even in like past days before before Christ. For example, tribes they used that to classify, you know, what type of animals are are together. Like are they mammals? For instance, another type of group. Like are they mammals and things of that nature. So. Yeah, so, you know, after after our reality went through, writing came in, which is, you know, around 3000 BC, that's when, like, the first great library started, and it's called the Sumerian Library, I mean Sumerian Temple, libraries, that's a plural word, where they had... Like all type of books, they had math books, just astro- astrological, astrological books, and religious scriptures. Well, it it wasn't necessarily books because books weren't invented yet, but we'll get into that later. So right now, these were just scriptures, which are like the way I interpret it because I honestly don't know what a scripture is, but the way I interpret it is along. A long paper that they read down. So, or a long paper that they pull out on the side. I seen that in I'm pretty sure Kung Fu Panda too. Ooh, but <laughs> how did I remember that? Honestly, I, I catch myself remembering the the most bizarre facts. I guess that's the benefit of reading a lot. You you remember everything. <laughs> so writing. Reading and writing, that's something that that hit in by 3000 BC, so 5000 years ago. But later, in in kind of the Dark Age, we know what happened in the Dark Age with the Roman Empire. With that, you know when the Romans collapsed. They lost... They lost it all. <laughs> Pretty much, all of all of the books they had. Well, I'm pretty sure they didn't even have books. 
don't know. If the, I don't know if they precisely had books at the time, but like with everything from Plato, Aristotle, all the other philosophers, it was just lost. Now, obviously, we didn't lose everything because we still have some information on the people, you know. So it wasn't completely lost. But you know, their some of their works were were never found, basically. And and the first people to read books when books were established were the Irish. You know, Ireland. And honestly, I'm not too. <laughs> I don't know much of Irish history, other than. They used to be warriors, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure every every European country or tribe state had warriors in them and were fighting wars. So I don't think there's anything special. <laughs> I don't think there's anything special. So yeah, we know that. So then you know books came in. People reading books. So then later, we know the Gutenberg printing press. And that was revolutionary at the time. Now it's pretty much, it's pretty much kind of worthless now. Well, in a sense, I'm pretty sure the Gutenberg printing press is still used. But no, not a printing press. I mean, a printer in general. <laughs> Which still derived from the printing press, so. It's not useful, actually. I mean, it's not worthless, I should say. There's still some worth to it because... Because having a paper copy of things, it can be important. Especially if you lose something on the internet. And by lose, I mean mistrack or something of that sort. So, we know the 1500s printing press came in. The religious people are using it to remake their scriptures and their text because they just had a limited amount at the time. Since only the highest people knew how to read at the monasteries, there wasn't, you know, they didn't know it. And they didn't, they weren't going to redo everything. Because they, I don't know, maybe they did redo some things, but. They were unable to make, to mass produce copies of, of the same text. And then the encyclopedia came in. The, the encyclopedic revolution. And this was, this was kind of, a, I would say this is kind of important. This is when the first dictionaries came out. And with the first dictionaries, it kind of led to a more broader understanding of of the world because people can see how different things correlate together well I'm thinking of a of, of thesaurus in Bible things we <laughs> I mean words and, and meanings w words and meanings of of the words and then of course after pretty much after that the, the rest is kind of history you know, obviously later came in the Dewey Decimal System and then the World Wide Web, the Internet. You know, the world as we know today is, you know, information is at my fingertips. Like, if I want to learn how to do something now, all I got to do is look it up. <laughs> That's a tip for you, too. If you want to learn how to do something, just look it up. For instance, I wanted to... I wanted to, like I said this in the past video, I wanted to learn how to build a computer. What did I do? I looked it up. <laughs> so, you can master information. And that's the, that's the beauty of the World Wide Web. Or the internet, whichever, whichever way you prefer to call it. But this, glut, what, what's the meaning of this book? Honestly, this can't say there's no meaning to this book, but I was kind of a little mm, 
kind of a little disappointed because, well, I mean, it was a good, it was a fine, I should say, informational read. There was really nothing, nothing that stood out from other than humans still use taxonomy to this day. I guess it's fine, you know. Uh, I'm pretty sure I still use taxonomy. Yes, I do. When I categorize my books. <laughs> when I categorize my books, I put them in, in different things. So, you know, kind of just uh, a little informational read. I don't know if I would necessarily recommend this book. Unless you're, of course, a history student of the type. And you have to do a project on it or something. So like to read this for fun I'm not sure well to read this for knowledge of course if you want to really know the knowledge about these things then and of course why not read it but this is just my my short take on glut mastering information through the ages